In this video, you're gonna learn how to say a killer pregame routine. Hey there, I'm Eli Straw, mental performance coach and the founder of SuccessStartToThin.com. The reason that you need a pregame routine as an athlete is because of consistency. As an athlete, there's not a whole lot that you can control in terms of consistency. Yes, you want to perform consistently, meaning you want to have consistent outcomes, but you can't force those outcomes. So you have to turn your attention onto something that you can control. And what you can control is the way that you approach every single game. And that's where this pregame routine is going to come into play. Now, there are two phases of the pregame routine that we're going to work through. One is going to be the night before or the days leading up to the game. And then the next one is the day of, so game day. The reason that I say we're either dealing with the night before or days leading up to a game is because depending on your sport, you might have a week between games, you might just have a couple days between games. For baseball players, you probably have a couple days between games. For football players, you have a whole week between games. So what you have to do is identify how long do I have between my last game and my next game and when do I really need to begin getting ready for my next opponent. For the night before phase, there are two exercises that you want to focus on. Number one is you want to be sure that you are preparing for your opponent. When you're preparing for your opponent, you want to get any information you can on them that's going to help you in the game. You have to be very careful here though. I was working with a football player who when he, when he watched film, it really helped him because he was able to identify some weaknesses in the defense. He was a running back. So he was able to identify some weaknesses in the defense that he could then put into his game plan and exploit during the game. However, I also worked with a tennis player and when she did too much research into her opponent, this kind of backfired and led to her feeling, number one, either like she should win, so it increased her expectations, or two, she felt intimidated because of her opponent. So you have to be careful, but if you can look at your opponent, get some information, and then apply it to your game plan to kind of take advantage of that, that can really be useful as you go into your performance. The second exercise that you wanna focus on for the night before phase is some mental rehearsal. You want to be sure that the days leading up to your performance and especially the night before you are performing some mental rehearsal. Mental rehearsal is where you're visualizing yourself performing, right? So if you're a baseball player, you're visualizing yourself taking some at bats. If you're a pitcher, you're visualizing yourself pitching. If you are a soccer player, you're visualizing yourself performing, right? So it is practicing in your mind. So mentally rehearsing your skills. When you mentally rehearse, this improves confidence because you are seeing yourself perform in your mind before you actually go into the performance. So that's what you wanna do for the night before phase. For game day, there are a few different exercises that you can use. Number one is you wanna make sure that you're defining success for yourself. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, if you wanna consistently perform, you need to consistently approach the game in the same way, like I said. One of the ways that you can help yourself do that is by defining success. And when you define success, you're doing so in terms of performance objectives. So you're setting yourself some specific performance objectives that you can focus on as you go into the game. If you focus on these performance objectives, they're going to help you perform consistently because you are approaching and you're thinking about your game in a consistent way that you've already determined, hey, this is what I wanna focus on, this is how I wanna feel, this is what I wanna be thinking about, this is what I need to be focusing on for mechanical cues, for example. Now with your objectives, I encourage you to set one on the mental side and the physical side. The mental objectives are gonna be in terms of your attitude your mindset, what you're thinking about, how you're feeling. So you might say, I wanna focus on feeling confident after a mistake, or I wanna focus on feeling successful no matter what, or maybe I wanna focus on repeating my self-talk during the game. For the physical objective, this is gonna be more in terms of your mechanics. You're not overanalyzing your mechanics, but what you're doing is saying, if I focus on this cue, that puts me in the best position to perform well. A really good example that I always like to use came from a basketball player I worked with, where he decided that his best physical cue was to stay low. It helped him on offense, it also helped him on defense, but he just kept reminding himself, stay low, stay low. So for yourself, define success in terms of performance objectives. Number two is you wanna still be making use of some visualization. Before you arrive to the field or court, or even right before the game begins, you also wanna make sure that you're using visualization like you were doing for the night before or the days leading up to the game. Tool number three is you wanna make sure you're using self-talk. Come up with a specific self-talk routine that you can repeat before the game, leading into the game, and then also during the game. Your self-talk routine, you want it to be tailored towards building confidence, and you also wanna make sure that it is helping you 
feel calm, relaxed, and more present in the moment. The next tool you can use is some breath work. Whether you do this in your house or in your dorm before you even get to the field or court, or if you do it right before the game begins, you wanna make sure that you're using some breath work with your pregame routine. Now, I don't just simply mean taking some deep breaths. I really hope you're already breathing. What I mean is doing some very deliberate breath exercises. One of the things you can do before you get to the field, so if this is something you're gonna do in your house or in your dorm room, is perform some mindfulness before you get to the field. Mindfulness is gonna help you really center your attention into the present moment, and it's also gonna help you get into a nice calm state before the game. Now, right before the game begins as part of your pregame routine, maybe when you're warming up, maybe when you are getting ready for the starting lineups to be called, you can perform some count breathing. Count breathing is a little different than mindfulness. In that count breathing, you're specifically gonna focus on a number that you're counting. So you're gonna breathe in for a certain number and breathe out for a certain number. A very popular form of count breathing is box breathing, where you breathe in for a count of four, you hold for a count of four, you breathe out for a count of four, and then you're gonna hold that exhalation for a count of four. But applying some count breathing and then also applying some mindfulness before you get to the field and court, that's really gonna help you get into a nice focused, calm and relaxed state going into the game. The last tool for creating your pregame routine isn't really a tool at all, it's more of a tip. I encourage you to arrive early, if you can, right? I understand that if you're on an away trip, it is not in your control when you arrive. But when you can influence it, I encourage you to arrive early. What this is gonna allow you to do is really settle into your environment. You can really settle in, go through your warm up, begin using your pregame routine, do some visualization when you're at the field, do some self-talk, remember your performance objectives, do some count breathing, and you're gonna have time for that. One of the worst things that can happen is you feel rushed. If you feel rushed going into a performance, a lot of times your performance is gonna then be rushed. So you wanna make sure that you're arriving early if you can and allowing yourself plenty of time to get mentally and physically prepared to perform. Those are the tools that you can use to create your own pregame routine. I encourage you to look at it in two phases like we did. You have a night before phase and you have the day of the game or game day phase. When you're applying these tools, remember the word consistency. Your aim with a pregame routine is to approach each game or performance consistently because that's what you have control over. And if you control that, it's going to lead to more consistent performances. Thank you for watching and I wish you the best of success in all that you do. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. We put out new videos each week on sports psychology and mental training. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about one-on-one -on -one mental performance coaching, head over to successstartwithin.com.